Welcome to Chemistry 101, Unit 3. Uh, unit 3 covers Chapter 3 of your textbook, and Chapter 3 of your textbook covers atoms and elements. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, atoms, for those of you who are unfamiliar with, with atoms, uh, one thing I want you to know about atoms, and, and we'll talk in more detail about what atoms really are in a few minutes, the first thing I want you to realize is that atoms are very tiny. They're, they're impossible to see without, uh, without at least um, some microscopic equipment. Uh, as an example, there are L atoms called carbon atoms. Each carbon atom is less than 100 billionths of a meter in width. So if you could take a meter stick and break it into 100 billion even pieces, uh, one carbon atom would actually be le smaller than one of, those, one of those pieces. So very tiny um, atom. The other thing that I want you to take away from this uh, unit is that everything is made of atoms. Everything that you can touch and feel is actually made of atoms. Now that probably doesn't come as a surprise to most of you listening to this, but just in case it does, um, you should know that everything that you can touch and feel is made of atoms. Now this, I, I want to talk about elements. We had talked about elements in a previous unit, um, and our definition of an element from the previous unit was a substance that's made of only one type of atom. It turns out that there are 118 different types of atoms. Another way of saying this is that there are 118 different types of elements. Um, every element, all of those 118 different types of elements has a name, a unique name, and every one of those 118 elements has a unique abbreviation. The abbreviation usually, usually is not called an abbreviation, it's usually called a symbol, so if you hear me say symbol, basically I'm talking about the abbreviation of an atom. As an example, the, the symbols or the abbreviations will either have one capital letter all alone. An example of that is hydrogen. Hydrogen's symbol is the capital letter H. Or the symbol can be one capital letter plus one or more lowercase letters. In this case, this is the symbol for helium. It's the capital letter H followed by lowercase e. Um, and and you, can, you will see all of these in a few minutes. The other thing that I want to emphasize is that all 118 different elements, um, each one has its own unique features or its own unique properties. So I said that there are 118 different elements. That's a fairly large number to keep track of. So someone actually organized all 118 elements. It was initially organized, the, the elements were initially organized by someone named Dmitry Mendeleev. You don't need to know that, but from a historical context, that's, that's the person who began organizing them. Um, and the way that Mendeleev began organizing them, uh, he did not organize them alphabetically, although that seems like a reasonable way of organizing them. That's not how it was done. Uh, Mendeleev organized them based on how they behaved. So I just told you that all 118 different elements have their own unique features or their own unique properties. But groups of them have features or properties that are similar to each other. So what Mendeleev and other scientists have done is basically organized all 118 elements based on which ones have similar behaviors. And those are usually placed near each other in the organizational hierarchy of all of the elements. So this may or may not be familiar to you, but this is the standard way that, that chemists organize all 118 different elements. There's a little box for each one, and there should be 118 boxes on this slide. Um, and this is called the periodic table of the elements. Uh, for those of you who have not heard that before, that this uh, chart of all of the elements is called the periodic table. And basically here is the, the way um, that the elements are organized here is showing which ones are similar to each other in certain behaviors. And we'll talk about that later in the course, but I just want to point out some features of this table. Each row in the table is called a period. So the first row going from left to right has only two elements in it. It has hydrogen, which is abbreviated H, and it has helium, which is abbreviated HE, and this row is called period one. The next row is called period two. Period two has eight elements in it, and then you continue on. Each row is, is a different period, so period three, period four, five, six, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and the idea is that each element within a particular period or within a particular row has features that are in common with the other elements that are also in that row. So lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon all have similar features, and so they're all part of period number two. You can also uh, 
you can also look at the columns of these elements. So the first column here, all of these elements in this column, um, also have similar features. So uh, this, this particular column is called group 1. The next column is called group 2. And it continues on this way as well. So this is group 3, 4, 5, etc., etc. There's an older uh, way of describing the columns, and I don't expect you to know that. But I do expect you to know that the first column is called group 1, second group 2, third group 3, etc., etc. And that the rows are called periods, period 1, 2, 3, etc., etc. But the idea, again, just to emphasize, is that all of the elements in the same row typically share certain features in common. What those features are, I'll tell you at a later date. In addition, all of the elements in a particular column share certain features in common as well. So uh, hydrogen, lithium, this is called sodium, even though it's abbreviated Na, K is potassium. All of these elements also have certain features in common. And again, I would tell you what those features are at a later date. But that's the periodic table. That is typically how you will see elements organized, um, and they're essentially organized based on what features they have in common with other elements.